I've just come back from a 10 day trip to Thailand, taking in Bangkok and a couple of islands and all done with carry on luggage only. And in this video, I'll show you how my travel gear performed and share some game changing travel gear findings. So for this trip, I traveled from the UK to Bangkok to meet up with my good mate James, spent a few days in Bangkok and then flew to Koh Samui and got a boat to Koh Phangyang and spent three days there. Then back to Samui for a couple of days and then back to Bangkok and then home. And just before I go into how the travel gear worked out, I thought I would share a quick montage of the trip so you can get a feel for what it was like when I was there. <laughs> As you can see, I had a great time in Thailand, a vibrant place with really lovely people. But the big question for this video is how did my gear perform? Well, let's start with the backpack. And if you haven't seen the video I released just before this one, where I run through all the details of each item I packed for the trip, then I'll provide a link to that video at the end of this one. Also, if you want more information on any item featured, I'll include as many links as I can in the description down below. So this is the SEG 28, the backpack I took with me and it's from Matador and has a capacity of 28 litres and turned out to be the perfect size for this trip. Now it was full but not packed solid. And as mentioned, the low weight of this pack is a major factor when traveling with just carry on and this bag weighs in at just under a kilogram. And the unique compartment system we have here where you can flexibly use a mix of front pockets combined with the full internal clamshell space worked really well. For example, I had direct access to liquids at security. Also, security wanted to see my get me out of trouble kit and that was instantly accessible from the front. I also needed a cable on the plane in the middle of the night from my tech pouch and also a toothbrush from my toiletries pouch and I could grab both of these quickly without having to fully open the pack and root around in the dark. The harness was super comfortable as expected, making the pack a joy to carry, which was important when rushing to catch a boat or a plane. 
and the host of grab handles and the compression straps really added to a positive experience. In fact, can't think of another backpack at this size and weight with such a practical feature set for one bag carry. Do though, let me know in the comments if you know of a pack at this weight that can beat it. Okay, now let's look at the clothes I took with me. And in the compression pack, I had five t-shirts and two shirts and I used them all. Now, shortly before leaving, a company called Unbound Merino got in touch and asked me if I wanted to try some of their 100% Merino wool clothing. And I said if they could get something to me quickly, I would take it to Thailand. And sure enough, a package arrived just in time with a hoodie and a couple of t-shirts. Now, Unbound focus on just Merino wool clothing in, but designed more for travellers than say trekkers and I wore one of their compact hoodies on the plane this one I'm wearing now in fact so this one is thin but it's really warm it's comfortable and it packs small which is ideal for when I'm not wearing it but having to carry it and all in all I found it to be the perfect hoodie for travel but the real surprise came when it came to using one of their t-shirts the t-shirts have a soft feel and fold down small and merino is known for keeping you cool when it's hot and warm when it's cold however the key benefit is that merino is antimicrobial which means the bacteria cannot act on the sweat absorbed by the shirt which is normally the cause of odor so the theory is that it can be worn repeatedly without washing and I decided to really put this to the test. So I wore the t-shirt on the plane on the way out for pretty much 24 hours straight. Now normally a t-shirt would be in serious need of laundry at that point. However, without washing it, I wore it on another full day in 35 degree heat and full on humidity and it got wet with sweat but dried quickly and still looked good whereas my normal cotton t-shirts felt very damp and fusty and clearly needed washing after a single day of wearing. Then still without washing I wore it on a night out and then on an internal flight to Koh Samui and then another full day all in serious heat and humidity and to cap it off I wore it for the return 24 hour trip back home. And believe it or not, it still has not been washed. And in fact, I am wearing it now and it still has no odour and feels fresh and dry. Now, Unbound Marina have not sponsored this video. They simply sent me a couple of pieces to try and I expect other Merino t-shirts will perform just as well. But the point here is that Merino wool t-shirts like this one are a complete game changer for lightweight travel as you can carry much less and wear it much more. And I never knew that until this trip. As you might expect, I went through underpants daily. So the five pairs I took did need to be laundered on the trip. The Iron Tide Adventure Shorts did their job really well. These are the ones with the fully waterproof magnetically sealed pocket so I could keep my phone and wallet on me when going for a swim, taking the stress out of leaving them on the beach or by the pool. I also used these as day shorts and one unexpected benefit was being able to put the phone in the secure pocket when we were out on motorbikes knowing the phone wouldn't fall out when bouncing along on the rough roads. The other two zip pockets also proved useful to hold the slim sleeve wallet and the bike keys. And the standard shorts I took also got plenty of wear too, especially on the evening. I used the Nomad E outer layer just once, went back in the UK to add a bit of warmth on a chilly morning coming home. And it worked really well, which I think is the graphene layer doing its thing. It only rained once whilst I was in Thailand and it was really heavy rain but only lasted for about 30 minutes and I was indoors at the time. So on this occasion the jacket wasn't needed for rain. Another real surprise was the Allbirds shoes. Now I bought these for the trip because they are lightweight and they got great reviews for travel. My worry though was whether they'd be tough enough for the job as they do look a little bit soft and unstructured. They were, in fact, 
Brilliant though, super comfortable, straight out of the box, grippy, great for wandering the markets during the day or even for dinner out on a night. I even unintentionally wore them on the beach and was worried sand would get lodged in the fabric, but it just shook out. The biggest benefit for me though was that these can be worn comfortably without socks and this meant I only wore socks on the way out and the way back so on a future trip I won't need to take a load of socks and that will save space, weight and laundry. Now in my view footwear generally looks better without socks when worn with shorts and these don't rub or irritate and they are breathable and if they did get a bit damp with sweat they dried really quickly and there was never any odour and as it turns out the insoles combine would you believe merino wool. Now most people in this climate wear flip-flops but I just don't find them comfortable or supportive and I think these are a great alternative. And when I got back these went in the washing machine as recommended by Allbirds and they came out looking like new. So for travel in warmer climates these to me are another game changer. The Philips one blade system did a great job of replacing the three much heavier razors I normally use saving space and loads of weight. The only downside I could see was that it takes longer to shave my head with this because the blade width is much smaller. So I'll continue to use this for travel without hesitation and use my original gear for when I'm at home just because it's quicker. The fussy deodorant I really like and continue to use it daily now. It smells great and there was no armpit odour even in the high heat and humidity. Now I would prefer a smaller form factor for travel but it wasn't an issue on this trip as the weight was the main limitation not the bulk and this is still very lightweight. And also being a non-liquid that's a real bonus when going through security. And the Matador dry through soap bag also really worked a treat, no slimy soap when moving from place to place. The Philips toothbrush worked well too and this super slim case protects it during travel and stops it getting your other toiletries wet. And I like the fact that this uses a single AAA battery and should last for months at a time. The liquids bag I've mentioned in previous videos and is still my preferred option being tough and cheap and waterproof with a triple ziplock fastening. And the meds pouch worked out fine, it's good to have all your medications in one place. As it happens I didn't use the compact backpack or the large microfiber towel on this trip and thankfully I didn't need the first aid gear either. I'll probably still carry these though on future trips. I also didn't use the vapour folding water bottle on this trip, I actually used a small plastic Evian water bottle which fitted neatly in my sling bag and would also work with the Kulo Clean B-Day bottle top if needed which I'll come to shortly. The side by side dry bag was ideal for separating used clothes especially on the way back to keep any odours at bay, uh, that is the non merino gear. The get me out of trouble kit was just needed for the power bank, the in charge cable and scissors but not anything else which is actually a good thing when you think about it. And as far as airport security is concerned the kit was flagged when leaving Bangkok for the UK but that was for the power bank. It seems that most security now want a power bank taken out of your bag so they can look at it separately. So they took me to one side to check on this. But when I opened the kit they immediately saw the Gerbrichard and took it out for a closer look. And I simply explained it was a bottle opener and they seemed happy with that and I was on my way. And if you've not seen my video on this particular kit I'll include a link to it at the end of this video. As for the tech pouch, well the new GAN charger did its job really well and was regularly charging three things at once which was great. And I used all the cables in here but I didn't need any more so all that worked out well. Then we have the Bellroy Venture sling and its contents. Now firstly the sling did a great job, it was the perfect size at 9 litre and it became clear my 7 litre Bellroy light sling would definitely have been a bit too tight for space. The sling was comfortable to carry thanks in part to the wide shoulder strap and proved ideal when walking the streets or went on a motorbike and went with me pretty much everywhere. It was also the perfect 
underseat bag for the plane. Standout features include the soft stretchy glasses holder in here and it works particularly well because it holds the glasses high up in the bag and that means it doesn't compete with the bulk of the gear at the bottom of the sling and can be accessed quickly. The unique double opposite ended zips continues to impress, give him great access and for me makes every other sling bag somewhat lacking. And the zip back pocket here felt very secure for my passport and cash. Now I use my Wingback Winston wallet in passport mode with alternative credit cards for emergency use and the slim sleeve wallet for daily pocket carry with cash and a Revolut card. The DJI pocket camera lived in here which made it quick to access when I wanted to grab a quick bit of footage. And the Kulo Clean bottle cap B-Day and the small microfiber towel saved the day at an airport loo with no loo paper. And I was so happy I had it. I was though lucky enough to avoid an upset tummy on the trip, which is when the Kulo Clean becomes indispensable. And that was perhaps helped by the religious use of hand sanitizer before handling any food, making use of the Orbit Key dispenser here, which lived in my sling bag. The iPad mini fits great in here and was ideal on the plane for watching movies downloaded from the likes of Amazon, Netflix and Disney. Although everything else digital I did on my phone. But just to recap, if I had lost my phone, this would have become essential. Not only to help find my phone if lost or disable it if stolen, but also to provide an alternative means of communication. So having this with me provided extra peace of mind too. The iMask on the flight was another surprising win. Now I've seen this highly recommended online and purchased it specifically for this trip. And when combined with some earplugs really helped me sleep. And this does a couple of things really well. It's comfortable to wear, it uses memory foam, it blocks out all the light irrespective of how bright it is outside. And it doesn't come into contact with your eyelashes every time you blink thanks to this bra shape and that's what makes this so good. The bottom line here is that this really makes a difference when it comes to sleeping on a plane and at around five pounds or five dollars I would say this is one of the best value travel accessories you can buy. The buff here also proved itself great round the neck when on the plane and when traveling in the UK for a bit of extra comfort and warmth. It also makes for great compact and lightweight headwear and really saved the day when I left my baseball cap behind in a cafe and found myself in serious heat with my head starting to burn. And after walking around with my hands on my head for a while, I remembered I had the buff in my sling and that solved the problem instantly. Although I did look a little bit like a pirate. The AirPods were used mainly on the plane for watching videos. And these are the AirPod third generation, which are not noise cancelling. And I forgot how useful noise cancelling is when you are on a long flight. I should have taken my AirPods Pro here, but I find they don't fit my ears very well. So I'm now on the lookout for a better option. So this is how traveling with carry-on only looked for me as I moved from airport to airport and island to island and compare that with my mate James, who was not choosing to travel quite as light. Now, admittedly, he was traveling for six weeks, but I have to say there was nothing at all to stop me from traveling for that length of time with my carry-on luggage either. Interestingly, James was carrying something I've not seen before, which I am going to add to my kit list for future trips. And I'll let him explain what that is. So this is a piece of kit called Aspivenim. It's effectively for bites and stings for scorpion spiders, wasps, and most importantly, those mosquitoes that unfortunately bite us when we're somewhere like here in Southeast Asia. It's essentially a suction pump. You draw like this and you have your different accessories here. Something like that for scorpions or snakes. Hopefully you won't ever need that piece of kit, but it's great to have just in case. I'll take the largest accessory here. You just place it on, put it on the area of the bite, and you isolate that, put it down, and you want that on there for about 45 seconds or a minute. Keep it held on. 
and it will isolate that bite. You take it off and then you won't have an itch again from that bite. It's a really great piece of kit. I had about 140 bites on my feet, ankle and legs in Mexico and this really was a lifesaver. And it's the first piece of kit that I pack when traveling overseas. So this is the one I purchased for myself and I'll put a link to this too in the description below. And it looks like this now, so it's a little bit more compact than the one James had. It costs around 15 pounds or $15 and it weighs just 96 grams, which is just over three ounces. So I think if you're traveling to somewhere where there might be scorpion snakes or spiders, this could be great as it will suck the venom out. Same is true for things like bee stings. So that covers most of us. And for those that get bitten by mosquitoes, I'm lucky I don't seem to suffer with that. But for those that do, this could be a game changer. Now I have to say that traveling with just carry on luggage I found very liberating. I checked in online 24 hours before travel. When I arrived at the airport, I just went straight to the gate using the boarding pass on my phone. I chose seats close to the front of the aircraft, which meant I could exit quickly and move fast to immigration. And then with no need to wait for luggage, I was out and in a taxi in no time at all. As a comparison, James needed to check in his luggage when returning to Bangkok, which meant an extra 30 minutes waiting by the carousel before the luggage even started to appear. Now I have two final travel tips to share that made the whole experience more enjoyable. The first is an electronic SIM. As we all know, making calls and using data can be crazily expensive if you just switch on your phone overseas. So when abroad, I would usually request what we call a bolt-on from my existing carrier. And in this case, it would have cost me £7.50. That's sort of close to eight, nine dollars a day for just 500 megabytes of data which if you use your phone normally, you can easily get through in no time at all. Compare that with downloading an eSIM if your phone allows it. I chose an app called Aerolo and you just search for the country you are going to and you're presented with network options. I chose unlimited data for two weeks in Thailand and the total cost was just $20 and it included local voice calls too. Then you simply download the electronic SIM and then just before landing with my phone in airplane mode, I went into the settings, switched off my primary SIM, switched on my new travel SIM. And then when I took the phone out of airplane mode after landing, everything just worked and it was a game changer. Secondly, I used a Revolut card for all my transactions whilst I was in Thailand. And you simply download the Revolut app, transfer cash onto it from your bank account or a debit card. And then you can convert the funds into local currency, Thai Baht in my case, and there's no transaction fee and the exchange rate is the best I've seen. Then you can pay in local currency and avoid all the usual card charges. The only thing I paid for from Revolut was a physical card. Otherwise, you'll need to use your phone to pay for things. And this cost me just five pounds, around five dollars. And if you lose your card, you can switch it off from your phone. And if you don't manage to do that in time, you only risk losing the amount loaded on the card. And I have to say it worked flawlessly for paying for pretty much anything whilst I was in Thailand. And it also was what I used to get cash out of a cash machine and it will be with me on all future trips. If you missed the video that shows in detail all the gear I packed for this trip, then I have a link to that one right here. And if you want to know what's in the flight friendly get me out of trouble kit, then that video is down here. So there you have it. I hope that's been useful. Thank you as always for watching and happy travels.